Well, before I start, I have a confession I have to make that I like nurses a lot. And I owe them a lot of my training. Even I used to be intimidated by them in my residency. <laughs> and I still do. Uh, well, we have a lot of challenges. And one of the challenges that we have is the scheduling of time. It's 2 o'clock, it's after lunch, and it's 25 minutes. So I'm supposed to teach you guys everything I have known in the last 25 years in 25 minutes. <laughs> and that's a challenge by itself, All right? Well, the other challenge is the, 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 the topic itself. The original topic that you have in your syllabus is crisis. And I kind of didn't like it because I hate to talk for 25 minutes of, about crisis. That would be very depressing. So I, I took the liberty myself to change the topic to cardiac issues slash crisis, if you don't mind. <laughs> and another challenge here is talking after Dr. Dreyer. <laughs> I have problem with that because Dr. Dreyer usually raises the bars very high and make it difficult for anyone who speak after him. But he also made my job easier because he spoke for a good maybe 15 minutes about concussion. And I'm going to talk about concussion. Dr. Dreyer also spoke about seizures. And I'm going to talk also about seizure because we have this conversation almost every day in the clinic. Our office, my office and his office is very close. So he tells me seizures are arrhythmia of the heart. And I tell him arrhythmia are seizures of the brain. So we have a lot in, in common. And we'll share a lot of information as we progress. The, the most important challenge you guys would see and notice in me that I'm Egyptian. So I walk like Egyptian sometimes. <laughs> I, you will see, I talk like Egyptians and I joke like Egyptian. Uh, I w was born and raised in Egypt and I moved to this country more than a quarter century ago. And I lived in Michigan for 10 years before moving to Texas nine years ago. And my policy is if you live in one place for 10 years, you have the right to make jokes about. <laughs> so I think next year I will acquire the right to make jokes about Texas. <laughs> well, the other challenge I did not realize until I got an email, uh, I think from Debbie last week, that this talk is videotaped. And that means that I cannot use any of my censored jokes. <laughs> well, I think we still can do it. Can we? Yes. OK, good. We will talk first about chest pain, uh, syncope. Dr. Dreyer talk, uh, spoke a little bit about it. We'll talk about seizures of the heart, arrhythmia. And we will end up with talking about cardiac crisis. Well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we as, are one team. Doctors and physicians, uh, nurses and doctors are one team. And we have the same common goal is take care of patients. So our all, goal always to provide cure, relief, and always comfort viewer. Since I promised, <laughs> I told you I talk like an Egyptian, all right. I have two Egyptians in my mind. We will follow their trip. They were coming to this country for pursuit of happiness. They want to achieve their American dream, all right? And we will follow them throughout the talk and we'll see where they ended. So they came to this country a few months ago and they landed in Detroit. And they were, to be honest with you, they were not very impressed. So <laughs> you know what's going on there. And for, just for uh, sake of the talk, we'll call one Adam and the other one is John. So they were talking to each other. He said, is this America? What is the difference between Detroit and Egypt? So Adam said, well, from Detroit, you can visit America without a visa. <laughs> so he said, okay, let us watch TV. So they turned on the TV and the first uh, uh, CNN, all the news, the first new was, news was the passing of uh, uh, Steve Jobs. He said, that's not a good sign. 
Before that, uh, uh, Johnny uh, Cash died. And before that, Bob Hope died. Oh my God, no jobs, no cash, no hope. <laughs> let, us, let us get out of here. We'll see what happened to them after that. <laughs> All right, go back, going back to medicine, right? Okay. Chest pain. Chest pain is like any other pain. Any organ in your body can hurt. Uh, Dr. Dreyer spoke about headache, so we'll talk about other problems as well. The problem with chest pain is the heart is within the chest. And most people think that the heart is an important organ. And they care more about the heart than the muscles. But believe it or not, the heart as a cause of chest pain is very rare. Most of the chest pains are non-cardiac. Only 4% are cardiac in origin. But it is good for our business. <laughs> if it is not because of chest pain and heart murmurs, we will bankrupt. <laughs> but any, any organ or tissue around the heart may give you chest pain. The ribs, muscles, uh, uh, lungs, even it can be uh, radiating from the stomach or anywhere else. But your friend in this is your history and physical. And I like this quote, always listen to the patients because they are telling you the diagnosis. There are certain red flags when it comes to chest pain. And when you see some of those red flags, you may uh, refer some of those patients to, to be evaluated uh, further. Uh, if chest pain is associated with severe, uh, with sports in general, if they are associated with syncope, shortness of breath, palpitations, excessive sweating with mild or moderate activities, these are red flags you have to send these patients to us. The nature of cardiac chest pain is usually dull, it's not localized to one point in the chest, and it is not usually on the heart, it's usually retrosternal, and it can radiate to the neck, to the left shoulder, left arm, and it is usually short-lived. Uh, on Wednesday, I saw a 10 years old uh, boy uh, who came to see me for chest pain. And I asked him in the presence of his mother, how long uh, have you been having chest pain? He said, eight years. <laughs> so this poor boy, the first words they used, he, he learned, mom, dad, I have chest pain. <laughs> That's the first few days. It cannot be, heart, heart chest, cardiac chest pain does not present this way. Uh, another, the, the, the uh, red flags, family history. If there is sudden cardiac uh, arrest, especially in uh, young uh, uh, teenagers or young people, that's another uh, red flags. I put a list here of some uh, of the possible cardiac defects that may, cost, uh, may cause chest pain, and I hope you have this in, uh, in the handout. Well, what to do when you have a kid uh, with, with chest pain? Well, first thing to do is get good history and, and physical. Uh, most of the chest pain that we see would respond to Tylenol, Motrin, and sometimes you give the, the kid like two or, th or 400 milligrams of, uh, of Motrin, the chest pain is gone in two minutes. It doesn't work that fast. So you can have an idea what it is. Uh, many of those uh, kids with chest pain, uh, with, it is actually asthma rather than cardiac. I don't know, you, do you guys keep breathing machines in schools? And that would be another thing you can try. It's usually safe. You can try it and see if it will make, uh, make a difference. Uh, if there are some red flags, send them to us. All right? Well, these two Egyptian guys decided to move from Detroit. You want to hear what happened to them after that or what? <laughs> All right. So Adam and John went to California. And they were looking for jobs. But you know, there is no, uh, no, no jobs, 
no cash, no hope. So they were said we are not a good fit. Let us split, and God knows what's going to happen to us. So each started to look for a job on his own. And uh, Adam was looking for a job in San Diego, and he found an, uh, an ad in the newspaper about San Diego Zoo. So he went there, and he said, I'm looking for a job. You guys have an opening for me. He said, yes, but we only offer $45 an hour. He said, I will take it. So they got the papers, and he signed a contract with them. And then he said, what kind of job is that? After he signed. He said, well, you would work as a monkey. Here is the monkey suit, and your job will put you in the cage, and your job is to entertain the kids in the zoo. He said, well, i never done it before, but I can try. So he started gradually to do some uh, dances, and there was a swing there, and he tried to take the swing, make flips, and he enjoyed himself, actually. He, he actually he thought that he's doing a good job. And he was making a big flip in one of the swings. And he landed in the next cage. <laughs> and, well, the cage was empty. But he looked on the back, and a lion was coming. So he got very scared. And he started to scream and talk, take off his monkey suit and want to climb the bars. And he said, I'm not a monkey. I am not a monkey. Get me out of here. Get... The lion came to him and he said, are you stupid? We're going to lose our jobs. <laughs> that was his friend, by the way. <laughs> All right. Okay, Sinkovi. <laughs> uh, I think Dr. Dreyer spoke about Sinkovi, and we will not talk too much about it, but I will tell you it is another source of business for us. It's more common in growing teenage, more in girls than in boys. And I, I like the word neurocardiogenic because it involves my specialty with Dr. Dreyer's specialty, which I who I like so much. So we can get to talk about this a lot. But unfortunately, it means neurocardiogenic means the neuro is not talking to the cardio. So it's poor coordination between the brain and the cardiovascular system. So when kids change position, there is a delay in signal coming from the brain to the blood vessels to make them contract and increase the blood pressure. So when those kids stand up, especially after prolonged uh, uh, laying down, the blood pressure tends to drop significantly. And some of them can actually faint and hurt themselves. Uh, what are the red flags? If someone faints while doing sports, if they have seizure, if they have arrhythmia, these are red flags. I would refer them to, to me. All right? <laughs> Well, you know I don't speak very good English, right? And Dr. Dreyer knows about that. All right. Because, you know, someone was going, like, uh, to Prague. I, I, I was not planning to say this, but since you guys laughed about it. <laughs> he was going to Prague. You know, Prague is the Czech Republic capital, right? So he uh, wanted to have a con He speaks English like me, even better than me. But he was very excited. You know the capital of, Brag, uh, of, uh, of Czech Republic is Prague. Uh, he was talking to the, the, that hostess, and he was telling her, I'm very excited, I'm going to Prague you. She said, sir, we are going to Prague. The UE does not pronounce. He said, oh, ma'am, I'm sorry, English is not my native tongue you. <laughs> he said, <laughs> well, sir, in this country we call it tongue. He said, I know, ma'am, I have been very vague you. <laughs> he said, sir, in this country, the U-E does not pronounce. His, she was very firm with him. He got his message. He said, ma'am, that's it. I'm not going to argue with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well... 
Okay. Now we talk about what to do if you have a child who is about to faint. Well, there are some standard recommendations. I usually talk to them. And I spend a good deal of time. I spend like 10, 15 minutes, and then I quiz them in these before they go. So I tell them avoid doing sudden change in position, especially when are, they are waking up late for a school bus in the morning. They have been sleeping for six to eight hours. They jump quickly to the bathroom, and this is when they collapse. So I tell them, sit in bed, stretch your muscles, and move your circulation before you, uh, you make a quick stand. When you are standing, do not stand still. I know some people stand still like this. No, try to tippy toe, cross your legs, keep on moving. And that will keep the tone of your blood vessel up, and the blood pressure will be a little bit higher. Uh, stay well hydrated. Drink plenty of fluids, especially water. Uh, I used to tell people drink plenty of Gatorade, but I found that Gatorade have a lot of uh, sugars, and that would create some problems, and Dr. Uh, Riley would not be happy with me. So drink plenty of fluid, and to give them the urge to drink, I ask them to increase the salt intake a little bit. Uh, if you are uh, feeling uh, lightheaded or dizzy, try to squat a couple of times. And if it doesn't work, hold on something. If it doesn't work, lay down. And if you see red flags, send them again to me. <laughs> All right, let us do the uh, seizures of the heart. Arrhythmia is arrhythmia. The heart rate varies significantly in children based on age and the physical activity that they are doing. And any child who comes to see you for cardiac symptoms, you have to get the heart rate and the heart rhythm. And this can be done manually or by hooking them to uh, a monitor. Under usual circumstances, for arresting child, the heart rate should be less than 150. This is a fast heart rate, one of our patients. I hope you don't see this kind of uh, fast heart rate. Heart rate in this case is uh, 300. Uh, it is fast. It is fast, but don't be very scared because this for us, I know it scares you, but for me, I think that is manageable. Uh, hopefully, you don't get to see this. What should you do if you have a kid with a uh, fast heart rate or palpitation or arrhythmia? I usually encourage you to try uh, vagal maneuvers, and the easiest thing is to ask him to take a deep breath and deep cough <coughs> as hard as he can, or take deep breath and bearing down, pushing down. You can, but you cannot do this in school because it would be a liability on you. Get the mother, and mother usually enjoy this very much, an ice cold water cup and splashed on their face. <laughs> and I want them to get that chill, all right, so they can break the cycle. I tell older kids to induce gag reflex. And in some situations, I tell them, at your own risk, you can flip yourself upside down, but if you break your neck, it's not my responsibility. <laughs> and I've seen it work in some kids. I put here, in a very small font, adenosine. Adenosine usually works, but I discourage you guys from even thinking about it in school setting, <laughs> because you, uh, it will uh, block the conduction in the AV node. The problem is you may not get the rhythm back. And that would be a little of a problem, will take us to the next phase that we will talk about. But try to, vagal maneuvers, if it doesn't work, uh, send them to the emergency room. Now we'll talk about the topic of, the, of today. We have one hour left? Okay, 45 minutes. All right, cardiac crisis. Dr. Uh, Dreyer spoke for 15 minutes about uh, cardiac trauma. That's concussion. But the cardiologists try to be sophisticated a little bit. We call it commotio cordis. But we are not as sophisticated as Dr. Dryer. They have five different presentations. Uh, we'll talk about it in a minute. And then we'll end up with the real cardiac crisis. Uh, I will leave a lot of what information here because of the time. We'll, you guys can read it in the handout. Uh, commotio cordis. Commotion cordis is literally the myocardial concussion. As I like Dr. Dreyer's definition, uh, mild uh, uh, trauma, trauma to the brain or mild traumatic brain injury. 
It is very similar here. It is mild traumatic cardiac injury. I have to add to it at the wrong time, right? You have to be at the wrong time. Uh, the chest wall in children is very compliant and transmits the uh, minor trauma to the heart at the wrong time and, and can cause that. This uh, real pictures from a, a karate player and he got a small bunch in the, on, on, on the chest and in the fourth picture he is uh, almost dead on, uh, on the floor. Uh, I don't know if I can... Yeah, this is the EKG that you guys know. Uh, this part here is called vulnerable part. Minor trauma at this part of the EKG can induce this, and that's called V-fib, ventricular fibrillation. So if any of you is planning to give her husband or a boyfriend a bunch, please try to avoid this part. <laughs> it can cause problems, all right? Well, let us go to the real thing here. Uh, cardiac arrest, right? Uh, it is very more common than what you think. And the range here is one in 50,000 to one in 300. It depends on which area you are in and depends on whether it's overrepresented, overreported, or underreported. But on, on the average, we lose about 700 young adults. Uh, 7,000, I'm sorry, 7,000. Uh, uh, all right, we know that cardiac uh, uh, condition is not number one. These are lists of different cardiac conditions that may cause sudden cardiac arrest. The most common that you all know, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, coronary artery uh, diseases, uh, Marfan syndrome, long QT syndrome, I put some list here for you, you can, you can read. And the same for in this diagram. And as you can see here, basketball and football are the most common cause. Uh, coronary artery disease, that's different from adults who have atherosclerosis and clogged coronary arteries. So if you, you can see here, that's anomaly, congenital anomaly of the coronary artery. So the left coronary artery is kind of wedged between the aorta and the pulmonary. So at rest, does not cause any problem, but with strenuous exercise, these vessels get engorged significantly and squeeze the artery in between. And that can cause uh, uh, cardiac arrest. Uh, Marfan syndrome, we are not going through the different uh, uh, stigmata of, of Marfan, but you can tell the fingers are tall, Cardio, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This is the good heart, this is the bad heart. What is the problem with that? It's a, it's a strong heart. What is wrong about it? Well, the muscle is very, very thick. When the muscle is very thick, it needs a lot of oxygen. This is number one. Number two, even its strong heart, it contracts very well, but it does not relax. And when it does not relax very well, it does not fill with blood, with blood. And when it contracts, because it's very strong contraction, that outflow, this area here, gets squeezed and becomes very tight. And the blood that goes out is, again, is very limited. So in a, the coronary arteries that diffuse the heart will get not enough blood to provide all these thick muscles. And what happens, those hearts can get into crazy mode called ventricular fibrillation, and that can cause sudden death in some cases. Well, what to do in case of cardiac crisis? First of all, you have to be prepared first before it even happens. And if you have a kid with that condition, check your ABCs, like any code that we go through. Initiate CBR, get help, and you have your friend, AED. So this is the chain of survival. And I got a lot of those uh, the following slides from American Heart uh, sites. You can go to their sites, and they have so many different uh, 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 presentations. You need to get help, call 911, uh, initiate CBR, early defibrillation, 
and uh, early advanced uh, care. All right, and the, as you all know, the uh, uh, AED uh, can be automatic or semi-automatic. Uh, as we all know, again, AED is the most important single factor in determining long-term survival or survival period. It has to be done within the first eight minutes of cardiac arrest. The sooner, the better. There are two shockable rhythms. One is VTAC, and this here, you see a well-organized, wide complex tachycardia, as opposed to this one is kind of disorganized uh, rhythm, and this called ventricular fibrillation. Okay. It works best well, with the shirt off. <laughs> You, can, you have to apply it on the bare skin. Not only that, you, you want to see it again? I, I think Dr. Dr. Roger did not see it. it works best now you saw it? Off. Okay. <laughs> Shave the hair if there's a thick hair there. And the beds are usually labeled, so red for ribs on the here, and white is for right. White for right, red for ribs. Did I forget to say clear? <laughs> Don't shock yourself or your friends. Make sure it is clear. All right. Uh, if there is no shock, if you both hook, hook, this, hook uh, those kids to the monitor and the monitor does not shock, there might be no rhythm, no shockable rhythm in case of called asystole. The heart does not work at all. In this case, it's not going to be shockable. You have to start CVR and chest compression and the whole thing. Uh, excuse me, transport patients, when there is pulse, if you apply six shock, shocks, uh, all right, always uh, look for your safety and patient safety and surroundings as well. Uh, when she use the uh, uh, AAD, when the patient is unresponsive, not breathing, and has no pulses. Uh, over eight years of age, more than 55 pounds, and these are the contraindication. If the patient is conscious, don't shock someone who said, don't <laughs> electrocute me. It's not going to be very good. Uh, if he is breathing or fighting you, uh, if he has pulses, all right? If he's young or, all right. Uh, if you are an ambulance, you cannot uh, uh, use AED while the ambulance is moving. Stop the ambulance and do it. Uh, I think this is common sense. How should schools prepare for, to deal with injuries? Uh, I think you guys know how to deal with that. Uh, these are your local resources. You have to prepare yourself. Use all your resources before bad things happen. You know what, what make a, a, a game plan. If something happened in the gym today, what, I'm go, what I will be doing. You have to activate, know, know the chain of events. Exactly who will help you, who will do what, when, how would you get help, communicate well with your uh, local physician offices if there are one, fire department, police department, county health department, and so forth. That's a, a question that's always asked. If I use AED, am I at increased liability? The good answer is most likely no, because of good, Sam, good Samaritan law. And there is a, a federal law called uh, CASA, Cardiac Arrest Survival Act, provide additional uh, protection for those who use the AED. Uh, AED, as we said, it can save lives. Well, uh, again, this is from the American Heart website. Uh, what should I do for if I have a work as a school nurse in, uh, in high school? Uh, and have a lot of athletes. 
Well, get some, uh, do your homework. Uh, Cedar Kids, I used to do a screening for uh, high schools and it was a lot of fun. I used to see like 200 kids a day. Be prepared, I will ask you a question in a minute. Uh, get family history. Uh oh, someone need AD? <laughs> That's probably me. Okay, personal history, physical examination. Uh, all right, heart murmur. The question, quick question for you here. If you are screening 200 kids in school and you want to listen to, to see who has heart murmurs or significant heart murmurs, would you do it? Who would say, I would do it in supine position? Raise your hands. Who would say, I would do it in standing position? Have five hands, so the cardiac examination, examination is not important except for five people. <laughs> okay. The correct answer, do it when they are standing. All right, because the standing will pick abnormal murmurs. Subine will pick the physiologic murmurs. Okay. I think you know all, all of this. Uh, summary, uh, cardiac, cardiac crises are not very frequent, but cardiac issues are. Uh, know your resources. Screen competitive sports for high risks. Prepare for the worst and hope for the better. <laughs> I always ask why they call it hot dog. Well, well thank you. Do you guys want to know about what happened to those Egyptian guys or keep it to the next session? Do you or not? Yeah. Okay. Any of you is newlywed or getting married anytime soon? None? Well, you can, if you have your kids getting married, you can use some of those as some advice, but I don't know if it will help. So they, each of them, after the, this uh, lion monkey incident, they came back together and they became friends again. And they, they found out that each was engaged to a pretty Californian girl. So they said, well, we want to live with those girls for the rest of our lives. So we need to see what is the secret behind long-term marriage. So they said, Adam, you and your fiance go and ask, and Joe will go with his fiance and ask some older couples, what's the secrets of your long-lasting marriage? So Jean came back and, uh, and his fiance and said, we met with this uh, couples who have been married for 50 years. And they asked them, what's the secret? He said, both actually said, we uh, go out uh, for dinner twice a week. It is so romantic, and we enjoy the, the candlelights. They drink, they party all night. And uh, my husband go on Tuesday, and I go on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so, Adam came from his visitation with another couple who had been married for 55 years. And they asked them, what's the secret behind your, your long-lasting marriage? They both answered at the same time. Dr. Dry likes us. They said, Grand Canyon. How come? He said, well, in our honeymoon, we went to uh, have our honeymoon in Grand Canyons. And they were enjoying themselves, just uh, newlywed. And they took the, uh, the mule down the river, and this uh, lady, the, the, her husband was taking, pulling the mule down. Anyway, the, the, the mule stumbled, and the, lady, the, the, the bride at that time got very mad. And she looked in the, in the mule eye and said, one. And then she rode again on the mule, and the mule stumbled a second time. She got more mad with him and said, two. And for the third time, she was really mad, and she looked in the mule's eye and said, three. And she got her gun and, and killed the mule. And her, her groom at that time said, honey, don't you think you were so severe with this pure mule? She looked at his face and said, one. <laughs> Thank you.